Very recently, I got a comment about how few actual guides there are to getting started in RC racing. There are a few that go over brands and such along with a few different cars to choose from, even on my channel, but none of them go in from start to finish on exactly what you need or point you in really any direction. I've also seen an influx of people who want to get into RC racing, but haven't done anything RC related before, or at very least don't have much experience in it. That is what this video is going to be on. In this video, I'm going to go from start to finish, everything you need to know and everything you'll need to do in order to go RC racing. I'll be splitting this up into a few different categories depending on scale and the type of track you plan to race on so it makes a bit more sense. So if you're looking for a specific scale, feel free to skip to these timestamps. Also, like usual, I'll not be covering Nitro Racing in depth as I simply do not have the knowledge to do so. With that out of the way, why don't we get started? The first part of your journey would be finding an actual track. However, finding a track could be a little bit more difficult than you might think as there aren't too many fully accurate track finders out there for the most part. Take this one from Associated for example. It may have Phil Hurd Raceway up there, but it doesn't have Hobbiton Columbus, the Barn RC Raceway, or even Loganville RC Raceway listed. Keep in mind, these are the premier RC racing tracks in Georgia other than Phil Hurd, so if you were to only look at this track finder you'd be left out of luck. The absolute best place to find RC tracks these days would be on Facebook. Now, I know lots of people have reservations about using Facebook as a platform for any number of reasons, but it still is the easiest way to find tracks and that are both close to you and still in operation. It's also the best way to figure out when races are going to be as 9 times out of 10, that's where events are posted. Also, if you live in Florida or California, consider yourself lucky as these states seem to be have a good number of RC tracks pretty close to each other. Ask around in local Facebook groups or forums about any tracks in your state or just close by in general. For reference, the closest track to me that consistently runs 10th scale to me is about 2 hours away in Columbus, Georgia, whereas the closest track to me that runs 8th scale is only about an hour away in Loganville. This sort of leads me to my next point. Choosing what scale you want to go with can be a bit of a difficult choice with money as no object. However, if you're on a budget, the answer is almost always going to be 10th scale. If you have a choice between 10th scale and 8th scale and both are well supported in your area, 10th scale racing will be a much more budget friendly endeavor. I'll also say it's important to check to see which classes that particular track runs and which ones are most supported. No point in buying a stadium truck if nobody at your newly found track runs or supports them. Again, going back to the track's Facebook page for said events will help you find out which classes are being run, but there's another place where you can see which classes are the highest populated, and that's Live RC. Now, we'll come back to Live RC for the general gist of it, but you can look up recent events on tracks that you're running on. For example, if I wanted to check to see how many people were in the last month's race at Loganville, I'd go to Live Results, check my local track into the local search bar, this time it'll be Loganville RC Complex, go to Race Results, and go to Results from Other Events, go to the event you want to look up, this time it'll be August 13 Cub Race, and lastly, we click on Race Entries. Here we can see how many people showed up for that particular race and how many were in each class. Here we can see that the most populated class was Sportsman E-Buggy. Now where would you buy such a buggy? And what does an E-Buggy even mean? Well, the second part we'll get to in a bit, but for now let's answer the first question. Let me get this out of the way now. If you happen to have a local hobby shop close by, always be sure to buy from them if possible. This heavily ties into the idea of supporting your local business but RC really depends on this. If you stop supporting your local track, you won't have a track to race on anymore. And it's not like you can race on Amazon or Walmart, for example. That's why when available, it's imperative to buy local, or at the very least support online shops that support RC as a whole. There are quite a few out there, but the main two I use are BeachRC.com and Amain.com if I can't find it on BeachRC. Amain is a pretty good one-stop shop if you want to buy all your stuff from one place and it's what I'll be using going forward as it's convenient, save for a few brands here and there I'll get to later. It's also important to note, this is a little bit off there, but it's also important to note that every car and brand I will talk about from here forward will be an unbuilt kit unless stated otherwise.
Now that we know where to go, why don't we figure out what to get with something I at least know decently well, and that's 10th scale. There are currently five well-run classes in 10th scale, with those being two-wheel drive buggy, two-wheel drive short course truck, two-wheel drive stadium truck, four-wheel drive buggy, and mini truggy. Two-wheel drive buggy, short course truck, stadium truck, and four-wheel drive buggy are probably the most well-known and most run at most tracks, so we'll focus on them. Two-wheel drive buggy is the premier class of 10th scale racing. It's by far the most popular class at 90% of the tracks out there that run 10th scale to begin with, and oddly, it's probably the most difficult to drive and set up for any given track. Now, if you're going to be grabbing a two-wheel drive buggy, which if you're just starting out, I highly suggest you do, there are many different things to take into account for what type of buggy you should get and what brand of buggy you should get, so let's go over your options. If you're running on any type of dirt track, your options will be the Team Associated B6.4D, the TLR 22 5.0 Elite Kit, the X-Ray XB2 Dirt Spec, and lastly, the Yokomo YZ2 DTM 3.1. For any type of turf or carpet track, your options will be the Team Associated B6.4, the X-Ray XB2 Scarpet Spec, the Schumacher Cougar LD2, and the Yokomo YZ2 CAL 3.1. If you're stuck on which one to choose, don't worry. There's a very easy way to narrow it down. Go to your local track where you intend to do most of your racing and see which platforms are the most used and go from there. If nobody at your track runs a Yokomo, it might want to be the best idea to start out with them. Team Associated tends to be a very safe bet no matter where you go, so keep that in mind so you don't go in blind. Go ahead and grab a B6.4 and B6.4D depending on your track. And I would go more into detail about the other classes, but to be honest, most of them are based on their two-wheel drive buggy platforms like the SC6.2 and the X-Ray XT2, just with a bit longer arms and stretched chassis. Once you buy your buggy, it's important to note what kind of electronics you're going to need. I've already done videos on each part of the RC car before, but I'll go over them quickly for those of you who may still be lost. First up, we have the good old motor. This little soda can is what powers your car and actually makes it go or at the very least is a big part of making it go. Motors in 10th scale are usually measured in turns rather than KV, which I'll get into more when we cover 8th scale, but for now let's focus on turn ratings. All you really need to know is that the lower the turn rating, the more powerful the motor is. This is why you'll see motors down to 2.5 turns in drag cars. Each class usually uses their own specific turn rating if that's what they're in at what's called a stock class. A stock class, if you're wondering, is a class in which everyone has the same turn motor. In two-wheel drive buggies, they usually use 21.5 or 17.5 turn motors, whereas stadium trucks, short course trucks, and four-wheel drive buggies usually use 13.5 turn or 10.5 turn motors. Make sure you check with the race officials to see what is race legal and what is not at your track. It's also important to note that in open classes, you can pretty much use whatever motor you wish so long as it's a 540 size motor. However, going overboard on power isn't exactly a good idea if you're just starting out. Only spend money on a motor you yourself can handle. Now, there are quite a few different companies that make RC motors for all kinds of budgets. Again, it would be best to grab a motor people at your local track are familiar with in case something goes wrong. As for prominent brands, there would be Hobbywing, Reedy, Trinity, Teakin, EcoPower, Phantom, Reds Racing, Wits Racing, McLan, and a few others. Next up, we have the ESC. The ESC is what allows your car to modulate how much power is needed from the battery. The same rule of getting an ESC that people are familiar with at your track still applies here. The main ESC companies to look out for when shopping would be the Hobbywing, Reedy, Teakin, McLan, and Phantom, and Trinity. ESC and motors are usually listed as 10th scale or 8th scale, and the motors are for competitive 10th scale racing are always listed as 540 in size. Next up we have the servo. The servo is what allows your car to steer, simple as that. With that being said, there are still some differences listed between servos to take into account. Most of the time servos are listed as either high speed or high torque. Speed is how fast the servo can move from lock to lock, whereas its torque is how much force it puts into said movement. Generally, the rule is the larger the front wheels are, the more torque you need, whereas the smaller the front wheels are, the more speed you need. Generally for 10th scale, you can get away with any high speed servo as pretty much anything and anything related to 10th scale have uh, small front wheels, with the exception of mini truggy. There are honestly way too many companies that build servos these days, so I'm just going to list the ones I have personal positive experience with. 
and that would be Savox, Protec, Reefs, Sanwa, Futaba, Shifts, and Tekken. Next up, we have the transmitter and receiver. Once again, I already did a full video on selecting a transmitter, so I'll go ahead and skip that for now and link off to said video in an annotation, and I'll also put the link in the description of this specific video. What I will say here is that the rule of getting what is popular still applies first and foremost. The main brands you'll see in the track will be Sanwa, Futaba, Spectrum, Flysky, and KO Propo. Next up we have the batteries. Now if you're new to RC, or have been out of it for a while, let me introduce you to LiPo batteries. These things are much more powerful than the nickel metal hydride batteries that were once used on mass. Now there are many different types of LiPo batteries being sold these days, but since we're only talking about 10 scale, we have the luxury of only having to worry about one type of LiPo battery. Pretty much every single 10 scale RC racing rig uses the 2S shorty pack as a standard. The 2S stands for how many cells are in a battery, by the way. Again, there are too many battery companies to list in less than a month of a video, but I can list the ones at least worth looking at. You've got Protec, Genzace, Trinity, Reedy, McClan, and LRP if you're feeling spicy, are all the major battery brands you're going to see at the track. There's also a subsection of LiPo batteries called high voltage batteries. These batteries tend to be a little bit more expensive, but also pack a bit more of a punch than the regular LiPo batteries and require a high voltage charger to charge them properly. Also keep in mind that pretty much all high voltage batteries uses 5mm plug-in terminals, so keep that in mind when you're buying terminals and soldering them up to your ESC. Next up we have all the equipment you're going to need in conjunction with all the equipment you just bought. And in order to put it all together, you're going to need some tools. I'm going to say this now and get it out of the way. MIP tools are the best bang for your buck options when it comes to tools. They never strip screws even after years of use and are very good in the price department compared to others like Hoodie. The main sizes you're going to need for 10 scale will be 1.5mm, 2mm, and 2.5mm hex drivers, and a 7mm wheel nut wrench. You're also going to need a charger to charge those expensive batteries you bought. Like I said before, depending on what kind of battery you have, you're going to need a charger. If you have a regular battery, then it doesn't really matter what type of charger you buy so long as it's a balanced charger. However, if you buy a high voltage charger, never charge a regular LiPo battery on high voltage, period. This will cause the battery to combust. I repeat, do not charge a regular LiPo battery on high voltage. Anyway, high voltage chargers are usually listed on either LiPo high voltage or LIHV chargers, so keep that in mind for when you look at them on different websites or in a hobby shop. Next up, we have the wheels and tires. Let's we'll start with the wheels first, as these can be easy to get wrong sometimes. Each RC car out there has their own specific offset, and as a result, they will need their own specific wheel. A safe bet would be, get, would be to get the wheels either made directly by the manufacturer or for your racing rig, or the ones listed for your rig by a third party. AMA made a pretty good little chart to check to see which wheels will work with which car underneath the actual listing, so be sure to check that out before making your next purchase. Next up, we have the tires. Once again, I already made a tire guide in the past, but I will say that if you want an idea of what to use for tires, check to see the, what the faster guys are running and go from there. Right, now that we got the tools, a battery charger, and tires, why don't we highlight all the little things you might need for starting out. First up, we have the most annoying part, the transponder. This will record your lap times on pretty much every trek out there that uses a MyLap system, which is pretty much all of them. Next, we have a turnbuckle wrench, usually included in kits in a very basic form. This will allow you to change your camber and front toe of your car. Next up, we have a hardware set. This is pretty much entirety for spares, just in case you lose some screws in building the kit. Bottles of shock oil that match the viscosity that ones that came in your kit. That way, if you need to take shocks or diffs apart for whatever reason, you can do so and just refill them when you're done. Consult your local manual which viscosity is needed for each part of the car. For the Team Associated B6.4D, the viscosity, otherwise known as the weight, will be 30 weight front and rear shocks. A camber and ride height gauge will work perfectly well in changing your setup as well, along with a setup board, a good old fashioned fan for keeping your temps low on your motor, and lastly, an electric screwdriver to make building a kit actually easy and not torture for your wrist muscles. Now it's important to note that everything I listed in this video and everything I will list going forward can usually be found in one place, that place being amainhobbies.com. However, you have the option to buy something locally, take that option as you'll usually get a better deal. 
A main is just really convenient if you want every to buy everything from one place. With that being said, let's move on to eighth scale. Pretty much anything and everything I said in the previous section about 10th scale still applies to 8th scale with a few differences here and there, so I'll go over a few of them now. First we have the classes. Now the classes that are most prevalent at 8th scale races would be E-Buggy, E-Truggy, Nitro Buggy, Nitro Truggy, and sometimes 4x4 Short Course Truck if there's enough of them. The E-Buggy and Nitro Buggy classes are also usually split up into Sportsman and Pro with Intermediate thrown in there should there be enough drivers in that particular class. Chances are, if you're just fresh and starting out, you'll be put into what they call the novice class, where pretty much people who just started out will be put into racing. But if you show that you're on pace with the higher classes, you'll be put in there later on. Pretty much every 10th skill company I mentioned prior makes an e-buggy with the exception of Schumacher and Yokomo. Possibly Schumacher, I'm not sure about that one now. However, there are a few other brands that are exclusively make 8th skill, so let me list them all here now. We've got Hot Bodies Racing, Mugen Seiki, Kyosho, Mayako, and S-Works. Those last two are exclusives to themselves and BeachRC.com respectively. To be honest, the only one I, those I'd recommend to be a, get to a beginner would be the HB or Hot Bodies E18 or E819RS, as it's well supported and easy to drive. All of these companies, save for Mayako, also make e-truggies as well, so which one you choose will mostly come down to your own personal preference along with your bank account. And that leads me to another point about 8th scale. 8th scale as a whole is extremely expensive, even more so than 10th scale, and this is for two reasons. For one, the electronics which I'll get to in a second are much more expensive, and two, the tires don't last very long and they're also more expensive, especially in truckies. Speaking of electronics though, let's go over a few. Unlike 10th scale motors, which are usually measured in turns, 8th scale motors are measured in KV. KV basically follows this rule. The lower the KV, the slow it will spin under a certain voltage. And since A-scale rigs all use 4S batteries by default, the lower your KV, the less power you'll have. Now, I've seen people run higher KV motors on the racing rigs before, but personally, I think if you're just starting out, you don't really need anything higher than 2200 KV. I personally run 1900, and that's plenty for me to clear pretty much anything on a larger track. As for the ESC, again, they're usually listed for what purpose they serve on the tin. Keep this in mind as well when buying an ESC and motor for 8th scale, it would be best for you to grab an ESC that requires you to solder the wires as that will not only get the maximum amount of power, but it will also teach you how to solder. And that leads me to my next point. Honestly, I should have covered this in my tool section, but here we are. Your soldering tools will need to be somewhat higher quality as most people who say they are bad at soldering are usually using bad soldering irons. Any hobby level soldering iron will work well here. Personally, I use this Ryobi soldering gun that was about 70 bucks at Home Depot, and there are other more expensive options that will allow you to solder pretty easily. I may put out a guide on how to solder in the future, but for now, click the annotation above for a pretty good guide on how to solder RC electronics. Another big difference between 10 scale and 8 scale will be the battery configurations. Unlike 10 scale, the battery or types of batteries used isn't fully standardized. I talked about this in my cost of ace skill racing video, but for the interest of fairness, I'll go ahead and list all the battery configurations one or more time for you guys at home. The X-Ray XB8 can use two 2S packs in the shorty configuration or stick configuration. The associated RC8B4E can either use two 2S shorty packs or one 4S shorty pack. The Kyosho MP10E can use two 2S two long, two long stick packs, or if you have a battery foam, two 2S two shorty packs. The TLR8 can use two 2S shorty packs or one Lawrence 4S stick pack. The Techno EB4.4.8 2.0 and I assume the 2.1 can use one long 4S stick pack. The Mugen Saiki MBX8R can use one 4S shorty pack or two 2S shorty packs stacked on top of each other. The Hot Bodies E819RS can use one 4S stick pack or two 2S stick stick packs stacked on, stacked on one another. And lastly, the S-Works S35-4E, which can only be bought on Beach RC by the way, can use one 4S stick pack or two 2S stick packs stacked next to each other. Now, if there's one last difference between 8 skill tracks and 10 skill tracks, 
is that 10 skill tracks tend to be indoors, whereas 8 skill tracks tend to be outdoors. And because of this, pit tables will usually be non-existent in 8 skill tracks, and you'll need to bring your own along with some extras. These things I'm about to list probably can't be found on A-Main, I haven't checked, but you can probably be found at any local hardware store like Home Depot or Lowe's if you're a square. These things include a folding table, preferably large enough to hold all of your cars along with some sort of folding chair, an extension cord, preferably one with multiple outlets and USB ports, a fan or portable heater for when things get uncomfortable, a quick setup canopy to keep the sun from beating down on you all day, some Tupperware crates to hold all your gear or a pit bag that you can buy from pretty much any hobby shop, and lastly some extra water to stay hydrated. With all of that being said, there's probably still some things I missed in this video, as it's almost impossible to cover every single thing when it comes to RC in one video as this is a very intricate hobby, and I didn't even mention nitro vehicles. I will say this though, the best place to get as much info as possible for racing will be from your fellow racers at the track you race at. I myself don't know which track you plan to race on, and all I can do is give an educated guess. The people at your local track will be your best resource on info you can possibly get. Listen to them, and trust me, you'll do just fine. That's all for now. If you enjoyed this extra long video, be sure to like the video and comment on anything I might have missed, or just what you thought in general. Any support helps. Also, be sure to check out my Patreon, where I post general updates on the channel and give out stickers of my channel logo if you want to rep that. Speaking of which, I'd like to thank my patrons Michael Williams, RC World Discord server, Casey Nix, Ben Reeves, Dave Armstrong, Lauren Lamb, Joe Jenkins, Juliet Lovelace, The Mailman 110, Brian Lofton, and especially Morrison Wan. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.